Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time for another class. Sorry, it's getting uh, started just a little bit late. I was finishing up with the writing class. Um, it was a great class. Again, um, it takes a little while to get started in the beginning of the writing class, but then once people have had time to think, they get very creative and write some fun stuff. So if you want to work on your writing skills, come to the writing class. It's, it's fun. It's a fun class. Hi there, Lisette. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Hi there, and hi, Mohammed. How are you? Fine. fine. Good. Thank I'm doing you. very well. Thank you. Okay. Lisette, where are you from? I'm from Colombia, teacher. All right. How's the weather down there in Colombia? Ah, uh, very hot. <laughs> That's what I have a Colombian student who's trying to get somebody to switch places with him because he's so hot and he wants to go uh, snowboarding somewhere. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know Colombia? Excuse me? Do you know Colombia? I, I have never been to Colombia, no. No. I know where it is. I know a little bit. I'm learning a little bit, but I've never been there myself. But um, when I see some of the Colombian students, they always have... Um, like tank tops on, and they're and they're very cool. They're trying to keep cool. <laughs> okay. It's so hot. Yeah. Hey, it's very hot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Mohammed, uh, where yes. are you from? I'm from Morocco, and I live in Spain, in south of Spain. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Do you have you lived there for a while? Have you lived in Spain for a while? How many years have you lived in Spain? Yes, uh, 12 years. <laughs> oh, okay, so a long time. Yes, yeah. for a long nice. time, yeah. <laughs> yes. Great. <laughs> it's next, Spain to Morocco is very... Yeah. Just 15 kilometers. <laughs> so to go, for, to go from Spain to Morocco, do you take a ferry, like a boat? Yes, Yeah. Okay. ferry. Uh -huh. If uh, you like, you can to take a plane, but... Sure. Okay. <laughs> What um, um, do you go to Morocco to visit? Yes, every year I visit Morocco. Oh, okay. My country. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's my country. Yeah. Yes. Are there so, um, are there a lot of people that uh, are from Morocco who live in the south part of Spain? Is that yes? Is in, that common? Yes, in all Europe, uh, oh. there are many people from Morocco living okay. and studying and uh, working. Sure. Okay. And European living in, the in Morocco, Morocco, in North of America, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's not very hard to travel around or get jobs in different places. You can work yes. in Europe? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We're just having a little conversation here while we're waiting for people to come into this class. This class is going to be a reading class, and I put the link up... Um, already in the Verbling chat so people are opening up the Google Doc it's a read only document so um, also this is the link right there to whoops sorry hold on <laughs> that's supposed to be a link to the article in its original form so there's a link to the Huffington Post which is a website that um, has a lot of different articles blogs um, opinion pieces news things like that. So that's where I got this article from. This is kind of, um, this type of writing is not a news article. It's not something that's reporting on something that's happening in the world. It's um, a personal piece. So for example, yesterday in the reading class, some of you were here, we read an opinion piece where a lady was giving us her opinion about video games um, for young students in the classroom and this article is um, kind of like a blog post where this guy is telling us about him and his wife and this um, that they're taking a year off from work and they're calling it a gap year so we're gonna learn about that and have a discussion about that so um, I'm gonna just say hi to everybody here hi Amparo welcome again and Diego, how are you doing? Hey, teacher. I'm doing really well. Okay, great. And Ahmad's back with us. Do some reading. Good, Ahmad. Hi there. Hi there. And yeah. Maria's back. 
and uh, Lisette is here from Colombia, and Mohammed from Morocco, Spain. <laughs> from, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Nihan, how are you doing today? Uh, thank you. And you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. And uh, Rabab? Rabab? Don't know how to say. But the little white kitten, how are you? Oh. Change the kitten, whoa. <laughs> now we have a military guy. Okay, Rabab, how are you doing? You might have to check your um, your microphone because it might be muted. And Adelina, are you there? So I'm going to show everybody how to check to make sure that their microphone is on um, because if you're speaking, I'm not hearing you. So um, there's a little icon right up here at the top of the verbling chat and as you can see when I'm talking I'm seeing these green dots that's when I know my microphone is on if I click on it it's gonna turn red and then you won't be able to hear me um, sorry sorry uh, yes. I I don't understand hey did, your microphone is on now okay. <laughs> yeah it's I working I have yes. to shut it down or not? No, 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 no. I'm just telling everybody. I couldn't hear you before, so I was telling you that maybe your microphone was muted. So oh. the way you, you look and see, there's a couple of things that happen here. You can, for example, if you're looking at me, you can see that my um, there's a bar of green happening while I'm talking. So if you're mm -hmm. talking and you don't see that green bar, that means we can't hear you. That's a good okay. way to, to know, too. Okay, Gassan, hi there. And I think, um, uh, yeah, I think everybody is has their microphone working. It looks like we are full. Okay, so people who are watching, you can also follow along if you like because we are going to be reading an article. Um, I'm going to, here it is on the blog uh, of the Huffington Post along with a bunch of other stuff. But I just put it here in this Google Doc, so I make it a little bigger so people who are watching it at home, they can uh, follow along with us. It's called The Great American Gap Year. And the way we do the reading class is I will highlight a paragraph. I will read it out loud. And then I will call on one of the students to read it again. So you're going to read the same paragraph again. The first time when I'm reading it, all you have to do is listen. So you might want to pay attention to how I am saying the words, how I am pronouncing the words, how I'm um, just my tone and the rhythm of my voice. Uh, because a lot of times for people who are trying to be uh, more um, easily understood, part of uh, speaking another language is also the rhythm of the language, not just the pronunciation of the words, but saying it in the way that uh, the native people actually say it because different languages have different rhythms so, um, so you can listen to how I'm saying things and then uh, afterwards we'll go over what it um, what it means and maybe we have time for discussion I hope also if you have um, any questions you don't understand one of the words in the paragraph we'll go paragraph by paragraph to make sure that we understand what's going on sometimes I might ask you to tell me what the paragraph says in your own words so that's a good way to make sure that you understood it um, and it's kind of a second step so one thing is just being able to understand what you heard or what you read but the next step is to be able to feed it back to me in your own words okay so we're gonna practice that today too alright the great American gap years everybody know what a gap is a gap Okay. Yeah. What is it? What it's is a it, space in between two things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was writing right here. Space um, between two things or in between two things. So in this case, it's year. So a gap year. So you take. Oftentimes, this is um, used when in the United States, for example, when you finish high school. Usually, you're about 18 years old, and in some people go right away to college and so they start college at 18 but some people take a gap year and they usually work or travel 
or learn something new um, and they just don't go to school at that time and then they might start uh, college or university after that okay so that's kind of what this is about my fiance and I have quit our lucrative jobs sold almost everything we owned and left the United States to see the world we're doing something that the Aussies, Israelis, and many Europeans are already very good at, taking a gap year. Okay, Adelina, will you read that paragraph again for me? Uh, okay. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Adelina, I'm going to start over here on my left. Go ahead, Adelina. Um, my fiancé and I have quiet our lucrative jobs. Uh, sold almost everything we owned and left the United States to see the world. Mm -hmm. Keep going. We are going to some. We are doing something that the U Aussies, U Aussies, uh, and uh, Israelis and many Europeans are already very good at taking a gap year. Okay, good. So who can tell me what that first paragraph is basically saying? In your own words, what did you understand from that paragraph? Um, I can... Okay, Adelina, go ahead since you read it. Uh, Sorry. No problem. <laughs> the gap year uh, uh -huh. is um, a an unhabitual thing of mm -hmm. Asian, Israel, uh, Israeli, uh -huh. uh, European people. Yeah. Okay. Nihan, did you want to say something else? Nihan? Uh, no, no, not yet. In, sorry. Go in, ahead. In an Argentina, we uh -huh. call that the año sabático. Uh huh. That's a barco, like, yep. Yes. So what did, what did these guys have to do in order to be able to travel around the world? What did they do? They sold everything. They sold they everything. Yes, they sold everything. And what else? And left the United States. They left the United States. And what else? They started to, to travel around they the left, world. Uh, they quit their jobs. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was looking for. They quit their lucrative job. So they did, it doesn't sound like they just had some uh, crappy, you know, low-paying jobs because the word lucrative means um, uh, that they were getting good money. So when something is lucrative, it means you get good money for it. You get a lot of money. So it sounds like they had good jobs, lucrative jobs. They quit. They sold everything. And they left. Okay, I wanted to make sure you guys know what Aussies are because... Um, Maybe uh, I am, I am searching this word. Uh, okay. Australians. Yes. Australian. From Australian slang. Yeah. Uh, people from Australia, that's what we call Aussies. And people from New Zealand are called Kiwis. <laughs> Kiwis. Good for them. <laughs> and from Newfoundland, do you know what they call Newfoundlanders? No. Newfoundlanders? Newfoundlanders? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember. Newfies or something. Newfies? Okay, yeah. So yes, yeah, so Aussies, Israelis from Israel, and Europeans from Europe. Okay, good. All right, and then Adelina, you said that's also known as a sabbatical sometimes. Yes, when you take a year off. Okay, yes. fiancé, uh, Lisette, means that you are engaged. That means you have promised that you are going to get married soon. Ah, okay. But Thank but you you, ha you haven't yeah you haven't gotten married yet. But you will be getting married in the future, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Com com commitment. Uh huh. And so you're probably wearing a ring on your finger, <laughs> like uh, something. On your like that. right finger. Yeah. I guess. Yep. On your on for in the United States, that's your left hand, uh, your fourth finger. In Turkey, in right finger, we are fancy, and uh, left yeah. finger, uh, we are married. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, yep, so that gives uh, notice to all the, the people that you're already 
going to be getting married. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> you leave you, some, leave you alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. The next paragraph says, those lucky enough to have a gap year built into their cultural fabric see it as a rite of passage. They usually do so directly after college and travel with friends to cheap, beautiful, beach-filled countries. Okay, Amparo. Those lucky enough to have a gap year built into their cultural fabric see it as a rite of passage. They usually do so directly after college and travel with friends to cheap, beautiful, beach-filled countries. Yes. So, um, Adelina? Si. In Argentina, there's people... Is that common for people to take a year off after college? Or um, before... Sometimes this happens here after high school. After high school, uh, between high school and college, but it also happens after college, before you go uh, get a job. Uh, yes, always. Uh, always after school, um, mm. secondary school, uh -huh. uh, or sometimes in the middle of the university. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just take uh, a year off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amparo, how about in, in Ecuador? Is that something that's common? No, it's not common. No? Yeah, so maybe um, a month or 15 days after you finish the high school, maybe, uh -huh. but yeah. not a year. <laughs> it's too much money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. how about uh, Diego in your country? Where are you from, Diego? Uh, I'm from Colombia. Okay, Colombia. So yeah. we have another person from Colombia here, Lisette. So both of uh, Diego and Lisette, is that something that you know that people do in Colombia? No, they, they usually don't um, take uh, a gap year. Mm -hmm. Lisette, do you know anybody who has done something like that? No, I know. No? I don't. Mm -hmm. Ahmad, no. how about in Syria or Egypt? Uh, in Syria, we don't have uh, that kind of mm -hmm. gap year because mm -hmm. after announcing the results of the high school Yes. Uh, so just the bac uh, baccalaureus, bachelor maybe uh, degree. Yes. Uh, we immediately uh, have to sign in the university or to look for a, yeah to look for a spot. And yeah. yeah, we don't have that enough time to sp to spend, and it's not allowed actually. Okay. And Gasan. Uh, you know, I don't know about other people, but. Uh, after high school, I went to work. Then a few years later, I went to university. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's <laughs> ki kind of a gap year, but you maybe you didn't have like a vacation. <laughs> uh, no, no vacation. I never had a vacation. No, never had a vacation. <laughs> Hassan, you worked okay. too hard. No, when I travel normally, it's because of I have a business or a job for something. Yeah. I I'm always doing for something. Uh -huh. Never, it's a, it's never a vacation. Never for just for pleasure. No. Okay. <laughs> Maria, how about in Sweden? Is that common to do? A uh, gap year? Yeah. Uh, we have like many inbuilt gap years. <laughs> like what? Yeah, like uh, parent, par parently, parent. Oh yeah, parental leave. You know, this okay. sort of a uh -huh. gap year because it's sure. a whole year and um, yeah, many people. I don't know. Yeah, it's possible to do absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> and Mohammed. Yes, uh, okay. I speak for Morocco and for Spain, okay. okay. For Morocco, <laughs> <laughs> for Morocco uh, after university, you have a uh, gap year for, for all life. Because <laughs> 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 you know, you know, it's an environment uh, totally. <laughs> but it's okay. In uh, Spain, okay, with the crisis now, economic yeah. crisis situation, uh, economic is difficult to have one gap year. Yeah. But you know, here in Europe, they are uh, Erasmus uh, Erasmus uh, program for oh, the yeah. students. I watched Exchange, the movie about that. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the, usually the students uh, mm, <laughs> in Erasmus it's gap year for the old students. Eh? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you study little, but uh, you go uh, in many parties. Yes. Without, uh, <laughs> so you have fun. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nihan, how about in uh, Turkey? Uh, it's the same. The university years uh, are gap years, uh -huh. and then we uh, we start to, to work, and uh, we have uh, no holiday. Uh, and uh, in university, I have fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then uh, it's uh, it's it's over. Yeah. And then it's to work. Yes. It's to work in university, uh, we can go uh, wherever we uh, wherever we want. Uh, we don't um, we ha we have not to uh, join the lessons exactly, uh, or we can uh, take a, a long trips, uh, and our parents finance them. Mm, yeah, it's exactly the gap year. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's see what what happens to these guys. They're taking a gap year um, from their jobs. Let's see. We're in Southeast Asia now, heading to Eastern Europe next, and finishing our year in South America. In that time, we hope to visit upwards of 30 countries. We have friends and family visiting us along the way. A few of our stops are to visit others or attend weddings. Okay, Diego, can you read that? Okay. We're in, we're in Southeast Asia now, heading to Eastern Europe next, and finish our year in South America. In that time, we hope to visit upwards of 30 countries. We have fr friends and family visi visiting us along the way. A few of our stops are to visit others or attend weddings. Okay. <coughs> So, so what are they going to be doing um, while they're traveling around? What other things are they doing? Uh, they went to Eastern uh, uh, Europe, in mm -hmm. Europe, yeah. and then they went to uh, South America. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, uh, visiting, visiting your, uh, their family. Yes. So they're going to have some stops to visit people and to go to some weddings. And how many countries are they going to go to? Uh, three countries. Yeah, upwards of. When you say that word, upwards of, so that means probably 30 or more even, upwards of 30. Okay, a gap year to Katie and I. <clears throat> so the guy's writing it, okay. A gap year to Katie and I means that we are going to all of the places that inspire us. We're taking cooking and massage classes together. We're wreck, wreck diving and jungle trekking. We're hoping to see all of our favorite animals in the world. We see this as our chance to do something amazing that wouldn't be as easily possible once we have children and a mortgage. Okay, Maud? Yeah, okay. A gap year to Katie and, Katie and I means that we are going to all of the places that inspire us. We are taking cooking and massage, class, massage classes together. We are wreck diving and jungle trekking. We are hoping uh, to see all, our, all of our favorite animals in the wild. We, uh, we see this as uh, our chance to, to do something amazing that wouldn't be as easy possible as easy possible once we have children and mortgage mm -hmm. at a mortgage. Right. So why are they doing this now? Sure. Right now they are just fiancés and once they marriage, they marry each other. That, that would be kind of possible to travel abroad and do that. So they are just taking the advantage. Of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to take advantage of their current situation with no kids and no mortgage. Does everybody know what a mortgage is? Yes. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. What is it? Unfortunately, <laughs> loan. <laughs> yes, it's um, the mortgage are the payments on a house loan. So in the United States, typically most people um, have to borrow money 
from a bank to buy a house and then you agree to pay the money back and you pay every month and so your monthly payment on that loan for the house is called the mortgage and so a lot of people feel that when they get uh, tied we call ourselves tied to the house tied to a mortgage you can't really just pick up and leave because your mortgage payment might be anywhere from I don't know eight hundred to two thousand dollars per month and in order to be able to pay a mortgage like that you have to have a job so you can't be just traveling around the world all right mm -hmm. Um, do you think these people are younger or older? Younger. Probably younger. Yeah, they're not, they don't have kids yet. They haven't bought a house yet. Yeah, probably in their 20s, late 20s, I bet. If they've already had good jobs, so they've been working for a while. All right. Almost every person we've spoken to about our travels has told us that they're envious and want to do the same thing. To that, I always say, you can just put a date on your calendar and give your jobs six weeks notice before you leave. Okay, good sign. Yeah. Uh, almost every person we have spoken to about our travels has told us that they are env envious mm -hmm. and want to do the same thing. To that, uh, I always say you can just put a date on your calendar and give your jobs six weeks' notice before you leave. Okay, does everybody agree with that? <laughs> Not me. Well, it's a little bit more than six weeks' notice. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it, I, it sounds a little bit um, naive to me. You guys know that word naive. It's a little bit. I mean, if I gave my job six weeks notice, that's all great, but I would also need a lot of money, right, to go traveling. So how would I get the money to do it? So he had things he could sell, but what if you don't have lots of things that you could sell or you don't have savings? So obviously he had to plan, um, plan on this for months and months, maybe even a year ahead of time to be able to save money and, and all that type of thing. Yeah, what I the, think you have... Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think even if you save the money, you mm -hmm. won't do it nowadays because when you come back, when you come back, your job is not there anymore. So yeah. somebody else is doing it, and I doubt they give it back to you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, what does um, envious mean? If you are envious of what somebody else has or what they're doing? Eager, right? Um. Well, it's Jealous. more like Jealous. Jealous, I yeah. Think. You but want, you wish you could do the same thing. Way. Yeah, right. What You're is, in which is, uh, yeah. What, Imad? Lisa, which yeah. one is more, let's say, impolite to say, jealous or envy? So, I, do, I, I wish you the best, but I just want to be like you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to hurt you. Or I don't, let's say, if but someone lo looking, yeah. If you understand what yes, I mean or what I understand. I, yeah. So, yeah, you want to tell them, I think envious is, um, in, jealous is probably more common, but usually when the connotation of being jealous means that you wish you, wish you had the same thing as they had and you don't really care about them. <laughs> So if you're if you're envious, it kind of means the same thing, but I think people it really depends on what other words you say around it. So if you say, "Oh man, I'm so jealous of you. You get to go travel around the world." If you just said it like that, like playfully, then it wouldn't um, be a negative thing. But if you were telling somebody else and you're saying, "I'm so jealous of them. It's not fair that they get to go do that." Then you would be kind of more negative. Um, and it would be not so polite to say it that way. And if yeah, yeah. And if I have, uh, if I have two people, one of them yes. has bad intentions. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh, this an envy or is there any word describe this kind of thing or? I think it's not necessarily in that one word. It's in the context of how you're saying it. Because okay. they basically um, mean, mean the same. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, 
but uh, in our country jealousy yes. is uh, not accept acceptable yes uh, but uh, uh, to envy envy someone uh, it's not uh, so bad yes yes in our country this is uh, like this jealousy is a bad behaving yes i would say that that's true also in english and it would it's more clear um, in the context in which you're saying it so if you say I'm envious of you for doing that if you said some other words then it might still mean like in a negative way <laughs> but it really depends on the words and the context of what uh, you're saying so in this in this um, way that he's saying it he could have used the word there jealous and if I would as a reader I might think uh, that's a little bit more of a negative um, thing um, so he used the word envious so that's a more polite way of saying that you wish you could be doing what that other person is doing yeah is it about um, intention no no and jealousy but I have a question jealousy. yeah Gasa. you know when you say when I you know jealous of someone or envy uh, mm. someone yeah so uh, jealous is better than being envy here you say the envious uh, is better than being jealous or more polite. But when I say I am envy someone or I jealous of someone, normally the jealous is uh, uh, being jealous is more polite than envy. No, I think envious is more more polite. But again, I I think it really depends. You know, when like, I say I envy yeah. someone, like yeah, I yeah. I want to go and you know take what he yeah. has because he has it. I don't. Uh, but when I yeah. say I'm jealous, I'm just saying, hey, I like that and I don't have it, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yes, but see, you you put a bunch of other words around that. If you say, I I envy him, him for his uh, good job or something like that. If you just say that, then you're just, you're basically saying, I wish I had a job like that, you know. I'm And you're, but it's the same. If you look it up in the dictionary, jealous and envious are synonyms they mean the same thing but what okay. I'm saying is it really depends on the context so that means the story that is going along with those words so the other words that you say uh, when you're speaking because he could have said they're jealous he could have said um, that other people have told us that they're jealous and want to do the same thing yeah envious just means you you want you want to do the same thing and that's what what jealous means too yeah okay yeah yeah I mean it I think jealous I mean if you really want I think jealous has a little bit more um, of uh, a negative connotation like you um, do you know what I mean when I say negative connotation yes I know yeah yeah okay yes so envious would be the more polite way if you wanted to tell somebody something but what I'm saying is in the slang like in verbal just speaking and just being an informal situation either one would pretty much mean the same thing but in writing it's probably more proper to use envious unless you want to give the um, impression that the person is kind of has a negative intention of why they're jealous like um, they they this um, content right? yeah it's the content yep this content kind of and the context yep yep like you know a lot of times we talk about jealousy too about in relationships husbands wives they're jealous of you know people that kind of thing so yeah but like you said Nihana uh, uh, it's more uh, it's not a personality trait that people would say that they like that is good you know like you try not to be jealous <laughs> of people right. Okay. All right. So he says, and we continue here. We both were living in San Francisco, so extended travel isn't completely unheard of. Others that we know have done so, but it isn't an ordinary thing. As Americans, we seem to be a little hesitant about the concept and perhaps a little afraid of the possible consequences. The biggest consequence or challenges that I could see when we started planning our chip, trip were jobs and money. Okay, Lisette. Okay. We both were living in San Francisco, so extended travel isn't completely unheard of. Others that we know have done so, but it isn't an ordinary thing. 
As American, we seem to be a little hesitant about the concept and perhaps a little afraid of the possible consequence, the biggest consequence or challenges that it could say when we started planning our try were jobs and money. <coughs> right. Okay, so it's not unheard of. What does that mean? It's not, it isn't completely unheard of to travel. What, is, what does that sentence mean? Uh, I think uh, that uh, this paragraph uh, is speaking about that uh, when I planning the, the treat, I, uh, I am... I am now the consequence or challenges for planning a um, for planning a trip. Maybe, yeah. maybe Go ahead. Maybe it could be uh, uh, far fetched, like a uh, far fetched. Right. You could, but it's not far fetched. That's what he's saying. So extended travel isn't completely unheard of. You could also say extended travel isn't completely far fetched. So it's not something that's so rare or so well known yeah opposite of well known yeah it well he's saying that it's not unheard of so it means people do do it so you have heard of it you have people do do it even though it's not ordinary it's not what a, a lot of people do not a lot of people are doing this but people do travel and they do um, go away for many months at a time so it's not unheard of that means it has been heard of. <laughs> it's kind of like a double negative, not unheard of. So it means you have heard of it. He has known people who have done this. But they were a little hesitant. What does it mean to be hesitant? If you are going to do something, but you are a little bit hesitant about doing it, what is that? Undecided. Yeah. Doubting. It means uh, to right. wait. You're undecided. You're doubting. You're waiting. You're not sure. Right. So they weren't really sure. But their biggest fears were what? What were they afraid of? What are the, uh, yeah. the consequences? Yeah, jobs and money. Like Kassan was saying, well, what if we quit our jobs and we can't find jobs when we come back? Or what happens if we run out of money while we're gone? How are we going to get more money? So those are two uh, big challenges. And a consequence is something that happens after as a result that's like an outcome so one consequence of quitting your job is that you might not be able to get that same job back okay Katie and I have been um, have both been extremely lucky in work we both left jobs that valued us as team members and offered to take us back once and if we return she was an engineer at spec and I worked as a sales director at AOL and the Huffington Post. Okay, Maria. Katie and I have both been extremely, extremely lucky in work. We both left jobs that valued us as team members and offered to take us back once and if we return. She was an engineer at SPEC and I worked as a sales director at AOL and the Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean that they were valued as team members? They Maria. had good jobs. <laughs> they had a good employer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they were important and so their bosses said, hey, sure, if you guys want to take a year off, we'll be happy to have you back. If you come back, we'll hire you again. So they were valued. It means that they appreciated them and they would hire them again. Right. They don't need to worry about that. So that's pretty lucky. That is not very common. Really depends on what type of a job you have and what your company is like. Um, Spec, if you guys know, they are a company that makes like iPhone cases and iPod cases wow. and things like that. And then um, AOL is American Online, and then the Huffington Post is an online website too. So he's a sales director, so he sells ads for those websites. So maybe he was a good salesman, and he really probably made good money doing that. All right, so at the beginning, leaving work seemed like the hardest part of our departure process. In my industry, it isn't, isn't unheard of, there it is again, it isn't unheard of, 
to let someone go as soon as they put in notice to leave and go work for a competitor. I wondered if we'd get the same treatment. Okay, Mohammed. Yes. Okay. At the beginning, leaving work seemed like the hardest part of our departure process. In my industry, it isn't unheard of to let someone go as soon as they put in a notice to leave and go work for a competitor and wondered if we'd get the same treatment. Yes. So again, he had to go and tell his boss that he was wanting to leave for a year. And so a lot of times what happens is if you go to your boss and you say, I want, I want to leave in six weeks, they might just let you go right then. They don't want to wait. So um, he was a little bit worried about that. And he wondered if that would happen to him. To get the same treatment, to get, uh, to get a treatment means to be uh, treated the same way. Or that say they have hesitation? Yes, they had hesitation. So they were, they were a little bit hesitant to tell their bosses that they were going to be leaving because they didn't want to lose their jobs right then, you know? So. To get a treatment, is that, is that to be treated? Yes, to good? be treated. Well, in this case, um, well, in this case, you could have said, I wondered if we'd be treated the same way. So okay. he said it a different way. We'd get the same treatment. So the treatment is whatever you get. It could be good, it could be bad. <laughs> but it's what happens to you, your tr the treatment. The way you are treated is the treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, it turn it, as it turns out, so you know, that's a phrase we use, as it turns out, so what actually happened, as it turns out, giving notice was the easiest part of leaving. Both companies were extremely supportive and we were congratulated rather than shunned. If we do go back to what we were doing, I now feel confident that we'll find our way without much trouble. Technology and business may progress without us, but it won't take much to catch up again. Okay, Nihan? As it turns out, giving notice was the easiest part of living. Both companies were extremely supportive and we were hung. How can I say? Congr congr yeah. okay. Congratulate Cong rather than shunt. Congratulated, yeah. Can congr uh, um, uh, please again. Yep, listen to me. Congratulated. And we were congr congratulated uh -huh. rather than shunt. If, if you do go back to what we were doing, mm -hmm. I, no I now feel confident that we will find our way without much trouble. Yeah. Okay, I'm just putting this in the chat here. So Sometimes with these long words, it's good if you just kind of break them up into their syllables. Congratulated. Okay. Oops. Congratulated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I messed up. There shouldn't be the T there. But <laughs> Lated. Yeah. All right, good. So they were congratulated rather than shunned. So that means that to shun somebody is to like not pay attention to them anymore, not look at them, not talk to them. But that is not what happened for them. They were congratulated. People were excited for them. And what is shunned? I'm sorry. Shunned, shunned. Shunned. If you shun somebody, so if I shun you, Maria, that means you told me you're going to leave, and I'm I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm just gonna oh. like not talk to you. Ignore. <laughs> yeah. Ignore. What, Nihat? Is it ignore? Yes. Uh huh. Ignore. Yeah. Ignore. Uh, just not like pay attention to them. Yeah. Okay. To shun to them, you're like, well, they're the ones leaving. We don't want to talk to them anymore. <laughs> Okay, but that didn't happen. So they had good jobs with good uh, team members, it sounds like. Money is a factor that I understand scares many folks off from long-term travel. What we've found so far is that we can survive for very little. A meal can be gotten for a dollar or two. A hotel is $10 or $20 a night with air conditioning, hot water, and a bed for two. Either that, or you can really splurge. Okay, uh, Adelina. 
um, you listen to me? Or can yeah, you listen? go ahead. Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Uh, money is a factor that I understand scares many folks off from long-term travel. That we we've found so far is that we can survive for very little. A meal can be gotten for a dollar or two. A hotel is ten or twenty a night with air, air condition conditioning, uh -huh. hot water, and a bed for two. Either that or you can. You can really splurge. You guys know what splurge means? No. Pay money. Spend Pay a lot of money. money. Yeah, to spend, spend a lot of money. money. So you can go very cheaply if you want to travel, yeah. or you can splurge. That means you may, you can pay five hundred dollars a night if you want to. <laughs> uh, I like to I like to book this hotel because it's very cheap. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> perhaps it's to waste money. Right? Yeah, is it to, like to waste money to pay more to than splurge? Yeah. No. Uh, no, no, not necessarily. If you're go, you could say like tonight I'm gonna splurge. I'm taking you all out for pizza or something. So it means you're going mm -hmm. to spend a lot of money. It means that you're going to spend more money than you usually do. Okay. So if you're splurging, you're spending more money usually for a special event or a special occasion or something. So you could say like I for your for a party or for your birthday, you would splurge. Adelina, did you want to say something? Uh, it's an extra cost. Uh, an ex uh, not, no, it's not extra. It's just it's it's describing um, what you are going to do when you buy when you spend a lot of money. So I can give you an example. For example, if I say it's my birthday today, and I'm going to splurge by buying myself um, a new dress. That means I'm going to go spend a lot of money. And I'm going to buy myself a dress. Sometimes it can even mean spending money that you might not even have. <laughs> You're going to spend Really? It's a good yeah. example. Yeah. Ah. So you might splurge on um, something that's special. Like if you're going to go on a vacation, you might say, I'm going to splurge. I'm not going to go cheap. I'm going to splurge. I'm going to get the good hotel for $100 a night. Or I'm going to go uh, skiing for a whole week, not just for one day. So it's basically it means I'm gonna spend money. I'm not gonna go cheap. I'm gonna spend money. Yeah. And of course, it's kind of um, a subjective word because if I'm a very rich person, splurging for me might mean I'm gonna buy that new house for fifty million dollars. But if I don't make that much money, splurging for me might be spending a hundred dollars on sushi, for example. So. It depends on how much Berlin, money there you is actually sushi, have. There is sushi that costs under a dollar? Well, <laughs> yeah, if you go eat enough of it. <laughs> yeah, that's too much money for a rough, you know, for a not cooked food. <laughs> sushi for well, I, I, party. I am hungry, eh? <laughs> there's, um, there's a movie about a famous uh, Japanese sushi chef. Yeah. Um, Named Jiro, if you look it up, something I forget. Jiro, just look up Jiro sushi. Jiro dreams. Jiro. About yeah, Jiro sushi. dreams of sushi. Yeah, Jiro dreams of sushi, and he has a very small sushi shop in Tokyo. I think only ten seats in the whole uh, restaurant, and he has several employees. And I think the price right now is about eight hundred dollars for uh, twenty pieces. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Love. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. That is too much. Wow. Forty dollar for each piece. Yeah. Yeah. So. Too many stupid people. There must be too many stupid people in Japan. You have to. Uh, you have to get a reservation three months in advance. Because they have ten seats. Yes. Only. Yes. yes. I think it dreams of money, not those sushi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Lisa? <laughs> Lisa, can we take, can we take this next class there? Or you, otherwise... Yeah, let's go to Tokyo. We'll meet at Tokyo. <laughs> yes, well, that, yeah, that's... Everybody lives in different uh, realities, right? So if mm -hmm. you can afford $800 for your dinner, 
you're not living in my reality. <laughs> I have a different reality, but there are people who can afford to pay eight hundred dollars for one night of dinner. Yep. Well, eight hundred dollar is one salary in Spain. One salary for one month. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 It's not even a good dinner. Yes, it equals my uh, salary. Yep. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> I kill for eight hundred dollar. <laughs> yep, that's. I go to McDonald's. To you McDonald's. go to McDonald's. It's not cheap. <laughs> I I prefer to not eat anything. <laughs> you can eat for one dollar. Or to or to, to search one one kebab. Kebab is more cheaper. <laughs> for for eight hundred dollars at McDonald's, you could probably eat for the whole year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Let's finish up this. Uh, we're at a resort in the Philippines right now where $80 a day gets us a well-manicured beachfront property, three awesome meals a day, and a significant tour or adventure each day. We're particularly excited to see the world's smallest primates, tarsiers, and to snorkel with dolphins. Okay, uh, Amparo. We are at a resort in the Philippines right now where $80 a day gets up a well manicured beachfront property, three awesome meals a day, and a significant tour or adventure each day. We are particularly excited to see the world's smallest primate, Tarsis, and to snorkel with dolphins. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, um, you can't go to Europe and be on eighty dollars a day getting three meals and things like that. But in some countries, the way the economies are, you can uh, get more more for your money. So they're in the Philippines right now. All right, next paragraph. We have our passports, enough savings to support us for some time, and a strong sense of adventure. That's really all it takes. The items that I've listed above only make things a little easier and our packs a little heavier. Okay, Diego. We have our passports enough saving to support us for some time and a strong sense of adventure. That's really all take all, all it takes. Then it's the 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 items that I've list of, of above only make things a little easier and our packs a little heavier. Mm-hmm. We're no different than the Aussies or Europeans in our willingness or ability to travel. It just isn't the normal thing for young Americans to do. I hope that our stories inspire others to do the same thing as we're doing. Okay, Maud. Yeah. Uh, we are no different uh, than the Aussies, the Aussies or Europeans in our willingness uh, willingness or ability to travel. It just isn't the normal thing for young Americans to do. I hope that our stories inspire, inspire others to do uh, the same thing as we are doing. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to follow our adventures, whoops, or, he or hear more, that I spelled that wrong. Or hear more, please have a peek at our travel blog. Okay, so. I have a question. Um, yes. Uh, in, in the middle of the paragraph, you uh -huh. say, we are not different, that and well, the word will not changed. be done. Yes. You know what? That's a funny thing. It, when you're reading a lot of um, English texts, Oftentimes it's wrong. It says that, and I think it's just some kind of typographical error that people make, and then they don't correct it. So I just copied this from the website. But if you're if you're ever reading in English and it says that, like that, in that case, it should be than. We're no different than. And I don't know why, but it seems that that gets by a lot of uh, editors <laughs> and copywriters and proofreaders and things like that. So it's a funny thing. I always notice it too. But there you go. So what was the purpose of this guy writing this article? Why did he write this article? To inspire other people? 
uh -huh. to fund his his journey. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, help, to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> he was broke and he had to. I agree with Maria. He wanted to, you know, keep connection with his old job and make some money. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, well, it also is maybe it is true that he wants to try to inspire other people to tell him, hey, it's not so impossible. No, I don't buy that. I don't no? buy that. <laughs> he is looking for uh, advertisers. Advertisers? Yeah, to his blog. Okay, maybe. Plus, that... plus. What? You know, he's, he said that he does. He did this well, like the RCs and Europeans. We don't have any Australians, but we have Maria here from Europe. Do uh -huh. you do that in Europe? That's your, you know, your thing. Me, Maria. Do people from you Europe typically me. travel, take a year off, and travel around on the cheap to go around different countries? Uh, well, yeah, I think it depends on who, um, how you prioritize. You know what I mean is that he used the uh, Europeans to make the American jealous and sell and sell. The story to them because if you say the American do that, I think the American do it the same. The Europeans do it, but he used the Europeans because you say, oh, I went to Paris or London or something. That's something probably in U.S. So that's why he used that to make them jealous and to read this and you know. Yeah. He wants to be a European. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> well, I, I think I agree with Gasan. He's trying to get you to think that. Um, there's lots of people who do this, especially Europeans and Australians, which it may be true, but obviously, Gassan, is, you're on the right track, and obviously this is talking about people who have the money to do that. So if you have parents who will pay for it, or if you've saved up money and had a job, but it's not the average European or the average Australian or even the average American who can think of doing something like this, because even if it is only $100 a day, that's still three thousand dollars a month, and that's not even including your um, tickets. So that's not that's not a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Gasan, you're you're not convinced. No, he is obviously <laughs> lying to make some money. You know, everybody has lies every day for to make money. We have a mask on our face just you know to continue our lives. Like you, when someone comes to your you know your uh, place you have to smile you have to even you don't uh, you know you are really not in the mood but you do that to make a life so he does it I probably do it you know when I work and yeah. everybody does it we have to read between the lines you know I bet he's you know he, he don't have enough money to for the tickets to back home so it's trying to make it online and but I think it's great they w they will have a great memory as yeah, they I want to do that. continue to be together. Yeah, I wanted to do that since I am, you know, I was a little kid. But you want to do is different than what you do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although it, I must say that when I was young, uh, after I graduated from high school, my friend and my friend who was a foreign exchange student living with me from New Zealand, we did go to Europe for two months and we traveled around Europe. So that is something that. A lot of Americans do do is go somewhere and travel around, not for a whole year, not uh, all around the world. I have two brothers living in yeah. Europe, one in London, one yeah. in Stockholm, in Sweden. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, even with that, I have a place to go to stay. But now it's yeah. not affordable. You know, yeah. if you are unless there is something to do nowadays, yeah. it's not affordable. Even like I said, I have a place to go and crash there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got to get the tickets and everything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Adelina, did you want to say something? Realistic. Yeah, realistic. Yeah. Yeah, but I can go to Turkey maybe. You know, Turkey is close and cheaper <laughs> than the rest of Europe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, go, go to Europe. Where do you live? Is that Gassan yeah. speaking? Yeah, Gassan wants to go to Gassan. Turkey. <laughs> you live in, where do you live? Outside I live in Baghdad, Iraq. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, today we were on the news all, all over because there was like 18 car bombs in Baghdad. So I, I guess everybody heard of uh, Baghdad today. Uh, here. To, here we go. Yeah, Nearly you don't look the, killed. You, oh, wow. You know, there is few countries Ooh. in the world that actually let me to get in. 
because my passport is Iraqi and nobody you know wants Iraqi to get into their countries one of them is uh, t uh, Turkey is Istanbul Turkey not the rest of it so I can go actually easily to Istanbul or to Ecuador I hear someone is from Ecuador between the you told I think some of the uh, students are from Ecuador so thanks to Ecuador and Turkey I yeah. could actually travel yeah but do you have an Iraqi passport or an Iranian passport oh no I have an Iraqi one no oh, Iranian. Right. Oh, okay yes okay. Yep. Wow, that's pretty. It isn't uh, only Istanbul. It is whole Turkey, you know. Uh, no, no yeah. uh, not for us. You know, it's different for for Iraq. So I know Turkey is easy to get in, but not for the Iraqis. Uh, if I want to get to uh, Turkey easily, I have to get through Istanbul as per airport. Through Ankara, I can't get unless you know I have a visa. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. I don't know this. I yeah. think you can uh, come uh, everywhere in the Turkey. Not yeah, if you have a visa uh, uh, for Iraqis, yeah. if, we, if you have a visa I from think. the Turkish okay, embassy, okay. but if you don't have a visa, okay. the only way you can get in is Istanbul. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay, guys. Thanks for reading. And uh, it's an interesting article, and maybe it's not really in touch with what the reality is for many people. So everybody is living a different life right now. Abdelina, did you want to say anything else before we left? Uh, a question. Uh, yeah. What's the meaning of willingness? Willing? You're, okay, so your willingness to do something is how much you want to do it or will do it. So if you don't have willingness, it means you don't want to do something. If you have a lot of willingness, it means, yes, I really want to help you. I will do it, something like that. Does that make sense? The interest yeah. in something. Yeah, your your interest, your willingness to do it. Yeah, your willingness um, to do something is how much you uh, want to do it or will say yes, I will do it. <laughs> okay. Anything um, else? The yeah. Uh, in the third paragraph. Yeah. No, the fourth. Uh -huh. uh, second line. Uh, we are. Blah blah blah, driving, diving, and um, and jungle trekking. Yeah. The first Wreck part? diving. See. Okay. What's the <laughs> I think what they're talking about is they um, when you go scuba diving. Sometimes when you go scuba diving, there's like boats that have sunk in the water and because of a crash or something. And so this is what people do when they go underwater and they check out the boat now and what happened to the wreck. A wreck is uh, like an accident. Does that make no, sense? Yeah. 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 That's what I so, that's what I think they're doing. So yeah. does that make sense? So basically they're bored so they you know doing stupid <laughs> things. <laughs> bored of they're, being rich. They're curious. They're curious. They have curiosity. <laughs> you know, they most of the people adventure. just like to see a real boat, you know, to get in a real boat or a yacht. Yeah. So yeah. even that's something big for many people. These people are too bored <laughs> that want to go under the water and see these old wrecks. Maybe they're bored. Maybe they want to, they need more excitement in their life. Okay, well that's what wreck diving is. So you can see a picture of it right there when you go scuba diving and you're checking out these wrecks. Yep. Okay. And any other questions before I end no. the class? Nope. No. Okay, great. Thanks guys. Thanks for reading. And for the class teacher. You're welcome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye -bye.